In the comments section, I received a question asking why I recommend using surfaces in a skeleton model as opposed to solid features. And I created a very simple assembly to explain the reason why. I've got my assembly, I've got a skeleton model with a couple sketches in there, and the target parts in which I want to create geometry. First, the reason is not because of mass properties. Let's open up the skeleton in its own separate window, and I'm gonna create some solid geometry based off of these sketches. Let's select our first sketch, and from the mini toolbar, I will use the extrude command. Let me change this to a symmetric depth. I'm gonna change the value to 20, that's good for my first extrude. And I create that as a solid. For the second one, let me show that as well. I'm going to create an extrude. By default, in the skeleton model, when you go to create this feature, it's going to create it as a solid feature with geometry. And I'll leave the default depth over there for now. So I've got two solid extrudes in here. If I take a look at the mass properties, and hit preview. Right now it's showing that it's weighing something like 200 tons. It's basically using a stellar density value. So here in the skeleton model, it is showing up as having mass, but let's close out of the skeleton and check the mass properties at the assembly level. Analysis, mass properties, hit the preview button. Here the mass is zero. Skeleton models are automatically excluded from mass properties. One reason to use surfaces instead of solids is that generally they're lighter. They take less time to regenerate and they are, again, just more efficient in terms of regeneration. But the real reason is referencing. Let's say that I've got my solid features here and I want to make some geometry in the target parts based off of them. Let's activate the base part. I'll do that from the mini toolbar. And I'm going to create a copy geometry feature. And I wanna grab a bunch of surfaces here. Right now I'm getting the top surface that I wanna get the entire base here. Well, there's the surface underneath. All right, here I get the intent surfaces, great. I'll select those and hit the check mark. Now let's open up the base part in its own separate window. And, well, I can't solidify this. You'll see that it didn't get the side surfaces and there's this big old hole, this cutout for where the solid surfaces got merged together. Similarly, let's go back to the assembly. If I was trying to copy geometry for the bracket, let's try the same thing. I will activate the bracket part, and right now it's got no features in it. Let's create our copy geometry, and again, I'm going to tap the left mouse button to try to get the intent surfaces. There we go, I will select the intent surfaces and hit the check mark, and let's hop over to, oops, didn't open it yet. Let's open up the bracket part, and again, I've got a few of the surfaces. I'm missing the side surfaces and the bottom of this. All right, back over to the assembly. Let's edit definition of the copy geometry and make sure my surfaces collector is active. I'll hold down the control key and get that surface and get this surface over here. And if I try to tap the right mouse button, there's no bottom surface to the bracket geometry. I could grab this surface here, but now again, when I go to the bracket part, I would have to do some kind, of, oh wait, it's still open there down at the bottom. I still don't have it filled in here. So that's one of the disadvantages of using solid features in the skeleton. By default in Creo Parametric, when you generate solid features and they intersect each other, Creo Parametric is going to merge them together. So let's find a better solution. Let's delete this copy geometry feature and let's go back to the base part. I'm gonna delete this copy geometry feature and let's activate the skeleton and I'm going to edit definition of this extrude 
And rather than generate this as a solid, I'm going to generate it as a surface and click on the Options tab to cap the ends and hit the check mark. So that first extrude is a non-solid feature. Let's go to the second extrude, Edit Definition. And once again, I'm going to generate this as a surface. And like before, if I twist it, you can see that, oh, I don't have the end surfaces. Let's cap the ends as well. Great, it looks like a solid feature. Now let's activate the base part. And again, I deleted the copy geometry feature, so I'll create a new copy geometry feature. And I hover my mouse over the skeleton, tap the right mouse button, tap again. Hey, there I have the quilt, that's good. Let's hit the check mark. Now let's activate the other bracket part. And I'm going to create a copy geometry. Let's tap the right mouse button until I get the quilt. Oh, come here. There we go, there is the quilt that I want from the skeleton. Hit the check mark. By the way, always rename your copy geometry features to indicate the model that you are referencing. Do as I say, not as I do. Anyhow, let's open up the base part right now. And there we have our surfaces. And I can select the quilt and then just use the solidify button and hit the check mark. And now I've got solid geometry here. Uh, for example, if I go to the View tab, let's create a planar section using this surface and drag it through the part. Hey, we do indeed have solid geometry created here. It's filled in the quilt, so that was fairly easy. I got all the surfaces that I needed here. Let's take a look back at the bracket part. Click on it, hit the Open button, and there I have my copied surfaces. And again, I can select the quilt. And from the mini toolbar, I can use the solidify command. And it's going to fill it with solid. Hit the check mark. And once again, I can verify that, yes, indeed, I have solid geometry here. Let's create a planar cross section using this surface and drag through the part. Turn on some cross hatching. And yes, I have solid geometry in these different models. So again, the big advantage to using surfaces when you are creating a skeleton model is that the surfaces are not going to be merged unless you explicitly merge them. They are going to be independent quilts and you can reference them independently. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.